Remember FiData? It's an interactive framework to build AI assistance with memory, knowledge, and tools. You can utilize the framework for building autonomous AI assistants, also known as agents that have long-term memory, contextual knowledge, and the ability to take actions using function calling. Now, the creator of this project has been introducing crazy updates over the past couple of months, and I have huge respects for him. Recently, he made it so that you can utilize the FiData framework which he has now integrated with another framework called LMOS. This is a large language model operating system which allows you to run the large language model on an AWS service. This was something that was inspired by another YouTuber called Andres. Now, the LMOS is something that proposes that large language models function on the CPU or the kernel of an emerging operating system. And what is happening is that it's going to coordinate multiple resources to solve problems. This is a concept that was discussed by the YouTuber Andrej in various tweets as well as videos. And it has now been implemented as something that you can access through FiData. This is something that has been implemented within this framework so that it's more practical and scalable by utilizing this framework. Now, this is where I'm going to hand it over to the creator of FiData. It's going to explain this way better than I do. So with that thought, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. If you would like to book a consulting call with me, you can do so with the link in the description below as well. Hey everyone, it's Sashpreet and today let's run the LLMOS on AWS. The LLMOS was proposed by the magnificent Andre Karpathy, where he said that we should think about LLMs as the CPU or the kernel process of an emerging operating system. This CPU, which is the LLM, can coordinate many different resources to solve complex problems using natural language. Today, we'll implement a version of it with GPT-4.0 as the LLM. We'll give it access to software 1.0 tools. We'll give it a file system where it can store its memory in a Postgres database or knowledge in PG Vector. We'll give it the ability to browse the internet for information and the ability to delegate tasks to other assistants built for specific use cases. So let's get started. The instructions for this tutorial are going to be on the FiData documentation. We provided the LLMOS as a template that you can pull directly from GitHub and run locally using Docker or in production on AWS. So go to the FiData documentation under templates, under LLMOS, and you'll find all the instructions to follow along the tutorial today. So let's get started. Let's pull up our terminal of choice and pull the documentation to the right. We'll first create a Python virtual environment so our dependencies stay isolated. Then we'll install FiData with the optional AWS libraries. We'll also install Docker Desktop if you haven't. And then we'll create our code base. We'll create the LLMOS code base. So we'll run the five workspace create command. And let's also pull up our um, code editor on the right. So we'll run five workspace create, which will give us an option to pull from a starter template, to clone a starter template. We can clone an AI app, an API, a Django application, or today we'll clone the LLMOS. Then we'll give our workspace a name. I'll just simply call it LLMOS, which is the default. And you'll see it'll create a code base for us with all the different pieces we're going to need in today already pre-configured. Following along, you can see what each of these folders stand for. There's a Streamlit application, fast API routes, uh, a folder for database settings, a Docker file to containerize everything and run it locally using Docker or on ECS. Uh, then also a workspace folder where we've defined all of the resources uh, resources we're going to need as code. So all of the resources are defined as Python objects. So this way, the next step for us to run the LLMOS, we'll export our OpenAI API key because we'll use GPT-40 as the LLM. We'll also be using EXA for the research assistant. So if you want research capabilities, uh, please get your EXA API key and uh, export that. We love using EXA. Uh, then we're gonna run the LLMOS. You can run the app independently, the API, and we'll just simply run five workspace up and it'll run the LLMOS for us. 
So now the three containers for a database and the LLMOS application are created. Open up the localhost 8501 and you'll see the LLMOS running in a Docker container. Enter a username and let's play around with it. The LLMOS has access to a calculator, uh, the file system, web search, and Yahoo Finance. We've also just given one team member right now, the research assistant. But in other examples, other videos, you can see that we also add a Python assistant, we add a data analyst, we also add an investment assistant. I'll leave this process to you for whichever other assistant team members you want to add to it. But I'll show you how to add them. So let's test out the LLMOS. We'll first add a blog post to the knowledge base and ask the question, what did Sam Ortman wish he knew? To answer this question, uh, the LLM OS is going to search its knowledge base for this information and then use retrieval augmented generation to provide the answer for us. Similarly, we're gonna test out a few things. Let's test out the calculator. We'll ask what is 10 factorial. We'll use the calculator to give us the answer. All of this is right now running in our Docker container. So you can see all the logs running here. The PG vector database, the Postgres database is also running in a Docker container, uh, which keeps things very neat and well contained. Now, because we're with these, uh, this tutorial is about running it on AWS, so let's get to that part. Um, so we ran here, you can skim through it, how to run everything locally. One part is, under the settings, we're only running the app and the database. Let's enable the API as well and run five workspace up. So along with the streamlit application, we now run the LLMOS as the API. So in almost all production use cases, you will be serving the LLMOS or your assistants behind a API that your front end will call. So the LMMOS, you can access the API documentation at localhost 8000 slash docs. Over here, you'll be able to see pre-configured endpoints that you can directly connect to your front end. So you can start building a front end in Next.js, a chat GPT like front end, and use these endpoints to serve your LLMOS instead of using the Streamlit application, which also you can use. So these routes are defined in the API routes folder under the assistance file. So all the routes are defined here. You can add your own assistance. This information is all also shared over here. So we define what each folder stands for. And along with that, there's more information how to build your AI product using the LLM OS, which endpoints to call, how to use the run ID and the user ID. So all that information is here, but you can also catch us on Discord if you need help with this. Now let's get to the AWS piece because that's what this tutorial is about. So to run this on AWS, export your credentials. Uh, you can install the AWS CLI and run AWS configure for it. Export your region and subnet. So add your subnet to the workspace settings file over here. So the workspace settings is a pydantic settings object. So I've ex already exported the subnet IDs as an environment variable, but you should add your subnet IDs over here and then add your secret. So when you're running locally, you probably don't wanna add a password because it gets annoying when you have to input it all the time. But when you're running in production, you should add a password for your application. I'm just gonna use admin right now. And you should also add a password password for your database. It's not the actual password, the actual password for my database is something different. So you should change it as well and not put it on video. Next, after you've updated the credential, create your AWS resources. The same way we ran five workspace up to run the application locally using Docker, run five workspace up and prod infra AWS to run your application on AWS. We've already pre-configured using infrastructure as code, all the different pieces you're going to need to run your LLMOS on AWS. We have the security groups because it should run inside your VPC. Not everyone should have access to your database or your API. We've added secrets. We've added a database instance for your uh, LLMOS. Load balancers, listeners, the ECS cluster, and the services that are going to be running. Let's confirm deploy. 
This would normally take a few minutes to run. I've already created these resources to speed up for this tutorial, but the database would definitely take about five minutes to run. So go grab a cup of coffee while this is running. For me, I've already created it before running this command. So it's also saying already exists. Uh, but for you, it should be creating each of those and it would take a couple of minutes to run this entire process. When the load balancer is created, you'll get a load balancer DNS which you can access to see your LLMOS running on AWS. You can also see the API load balancer over here. You can add slash docs to get your LLMOS running on AWS as an API. So a quick check-in on your AWS console, you can see under your RDS databases, you'll have your LLMOS prod DB. I'm using a small instance. You can use a free tier if you'd like or a larger instance if you're going to be serving this application in production. Under the ECS console, you can see your service running. You can see the application service and the API service running. Uh, you can give it more memory, less memory, and you can fine tune it over here. You can see the logs for this application. Then finally, along with the load balancer, you can use Route 53 to add a, um, to, to point your domain to your LLMOS. So instead of using this load balancer, I'm, I've pointed the LLMOS.aidev.run domain to the LLMOS. So all of that instructions is in the file data documentation. But now let's check out the LLMOS that we built. Admin password to get in there. Next, let's test it out. So let's add the blog post again, which we just ran locally. To see if it works, it's going to process those URLs and add it to the vector DB, and we'll ask, what did Sam Ortman know? Wish you knew. And the LLMS is now running in production on AWS. You can also serve this as an API for your application. And now let's give it something a little more complex. We'll ask it to write a comparison between NVIDIA and AMD using the Yahoo Finance tools. Now, I like to give my videos under 10 minutes. This has already exceeded that. Uh, so give the LLMS a try. Check out the file data documentation where all of this information is there. Drop by in our Discord, open up a GitHub issue if you have any questions, and I hope this helps you run the LLMOS in production. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. Now, that was truly amazing. I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Phi Data Framework as well as LMOS, as both of them are proposing a solution in various ways. So I'll leave a link to whatever we used in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon because it's a great way for you to access subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. With that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.